is CISL Vancouver. And now, and now it's Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk on AM650. Now broadcasting from the Barber & Co. Studios, here's your host, Tyler Green. Welcome back to Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk second half kickoff brought to you by Global Scarves, producing soccer scarves for over 40 years. Get scarves for your local club, organization, or school at globalscarves.com. The show has scarves. Now you can too. Globalscarves.com. Good evening. My name's Tyler Green. We'll talk about a poor Whitecaps second half and some refereeing decisions whether you agree or disagree in just a minute. But first, let's look at one of those teams that will be playing in the World Cup final tomorrow in what we like to call the Full 90. This is the Full 90 on Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk with all the info you need for the countries playing in Brazil. This Germany profile is presented by The Pint. Germany saw off France to reach the semifinals and a date against host Brazil at the World Cup. While Brazil were the favorites, it was the Germans that shocked the Brazilians when Thomas Müller scored in the 11th minute. By the 29th minute, a nation was shocked as Germany had a commanding 5-0 lead, including Miroslav Klose's 16th goal in World Cup competition, becoming the all-time leading World Cup goal scorer. The Germans slowed down in the second half, winning the match 7-1, and more importantly, a date with Argentina in the World Cup final. Germany is looking to claim their fourth World Cup title and become the first European side to win a World Cup in South America. That Germany profile was presented by The Pint. The Pint is Germany house. Cheer on Germany in the World Cup final match on Sunday. The Pint boasts over 75 TVs and offers pictures of Bud and Bud Light for fifteen seventy-five. The Pint is Vancouver's largest sports bar. To make a booking, email vancouver at thepint.ca. So tonight at BC Place, White Cups obviously lost, but it was uh, pretty hot inside BC Place. And of course, uh, the weather forecast, it's going to be hot all week. And you don't want to go out in that heat and do work on your car, which is why closed loop mobile oil change is absolutely perfect. They'll give you a tune up and you can sit back and drink one of those ice cold umbrella drinks, maybe a cold beer. They'll come to you. They'll work in the heat, so contact CloseLoopOil.ca. They come directly to your home. Maintain your vehicle with warranty-approved parts and fluids. CloseLoopOil.ca. All right. It was an absolutely terrible second half of the Vancouver Whitecaps, and we're going to talk about that uh, oh, in the next uh, segment as well. We're going to uh, get to some audio. Simon Fudge is going to rejoin us at 11.30. But I want to weigh in on the poll question. The Barber poll brought to you by barberandco.ca. Who's going to win the World Cup? Random James saying Germany. His call from the start, 3-2, even giving us the the score line. By the way, if you uh, tweet us with your thoughts on the Barber poll, you have a chance to win a service at Barber & Co., the gas town location, whether it's a haircut or a hot shave, they'll take care of you uh, at Gas Town at uh, on Abbott Street. Stuck on a sofa, St. Germany three nil. Shiro Borshevsky <laughs> completely mangled his Twitter handle, but uh, he's going uh, Germany three one. Germany will press, and Argentina will find it hard to gain control and break through. Uh, Omir uh, saying, Germany, I didn't get a lot of things right in my bracket, but I did get that right so far. He is absolutely uh, 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 right on that. He has not gotten much right in his World Cup bracket. There are a few that uh, are are close, really, in our uh, in our World Cup bracket, it, uh, it, there are about five or six guys. It comes down to tomorrow. Because really, no, but one guy got the third place game correct. And he shot up to second place because of that. But there are, there are about five, six guys that, that have a shot of winning tomorrow. Or finishing in the top three to win a prize for the uh, Kia Vancouver 
Soccer Talk World Cup Bracket Contest. You can check the, the standings prior to the third place game from earlier today at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash soccer talk van. Uh, but there are some, there are some very, very, very interesting chances for some of these guys tomorrow. Kia Vancouver, they have a contest, a new contest where you can basically win a whole bunch of great things, including a, a complete detail package for your Kia. That's uh, about uh, $250 value plus four tickets to an upcoming Whitecaps game and four autographed jerseys. You can't go wrong with that. All you have to do, it's pretty simple, is upload a picture with the hashtag selfie with your Kia to Kia Vancouver's Facebook page or on Twitter and hashtag Kia Vancouver or perhaps uh, Instagram as well with the hashtag Kia Vancouver. It's pretty much that easy. Any one of the social medias, hashtag Kia Vancouver. Contest uh, has already begun. It ends August 31st. I'm going to hashtag my selfie with my Kia Sorento. Might do that tomorrow at uh, the drive-in theater. That's what I'm doing tomorrow night, going to the drive-in out in uh, wherever the wherever it is. Going to Google Google map that tomorrow, the twilight. Going to do that after the, uh, the big World Cup final. It's in Langley, according to Greg. Thank you, Greg. I thought it was in Langley, but I wasn't positive. Don't go over a bridge too often. But I'm going to selfie my photo of me and the, the Kia Sorento at the drive-in. And it's pretty easy. The most likes or loves, depending on uh, where you, uh, I guess if it's on Instagram, is that a love? The heart. But whoever gets the most wins the contest. So you want to spread the word because you want your selfie to win. All right. So uh, go, to, uh, go to Kia Vancouver's uh, Facebook page. Check out all the details. It's uh, going to be a pretty fun contest there. A lot of cool prizes, uh, and you get to go to a Whitecaps game if you win. So there you go. Plus, if you go to Kia Vancouver and pick up a new car, free lifetime car washes, oil changes, and airport shuttle service and parking, Kia Vancouver is at Southwest Marine Drive, 396 Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon. All right, we have audio from Carl Robinson. We have audio from Carlisle Mitchell, who scored his first Whitecaps MLS goal and we also have audio from David Osted and we will hear from that as well as get the manager's rant next this is Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk on AM 650 follow us on Twitter at Soccer Talk 650 and at Tyler Green FC not that your stylist at the salon isn't doing a good job, but man, you deserve the big red leather barber chair experience of Barber & Co. Here's how it works. Go to barberandco.ca. Book your appointment at one of the four barber shops in Gastown, Yale Town, the Financial District, or Camby and 18th. You can just walk in, too, and get your hair cut, hot shave, buzz cut, fade, or beard trim experience. A great wedding party idea, too. Barberandco.ca. The 2014 season of EA Sports BC Soccer Premier League. Welcome to the front lines of the game. Welcome to the big league. The one that provides an elevated level of competition for high performance players within BC and contributes to player development for the Canadian national team and professional opportunities here and abroad. This is where you're going to see the top youth players in action. Catch some of the most intense soccer in the province. EA Sports BC Soccer Premier League. For information and upcoming Coming games, check out bcsoccer.net. What's it like to score in the beautiful game? Come to Kia Vancouver before July 13th and score the best price during Kia's 2014 FIFA World Cup sales event. Plus 0% financing for 84 months and up to 4000 in cash bonuses on select models. And only at Kia Vancouver, score free lifetime car washes, free lifetime oil changes, free lifetime airport shuttle and parking, and always service with a smile. 
Kia Vancouver, the power to surprise at KiaVancouver.com and on Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon. It was true Italy. Every weekend, the Dusso family gathered to share laughter and plates of homemade pasta. So when the Dusso brothers came to Canada, rather than become homesick for the good times, they opened Dusso's on Granville Island. A generation later, the Dusso's are still creating authentic, home-style Italian pasta and sauce from natural ingredients. Great carbs and quick, healthy meals. Official pasta of the Vancouver Canucks and Vancouver Whitecaps FC. Look for Dusso's fresh pasta and sauce at your local grocery store. Visit Dusos, D-U-S-O-S dot com. Safety, it's vital to each of us. Hear from people who've seen the significance of the safety that comes from a spiritual defense. They've learned that relying on God cares for people in unmistakable, even surprising ways. Compelling ideas and real-life accounts on the next radio edition of the Christian Science Sentinel. Listen for the Christian Science Sentinel Radio Edition each and every Sunday morning at 8.30 on all-time favorites, AM 650. Now that summer is finally here, on-the-run stores at Esso Stations want you to enjoy every moment. The right one! On-the-run stores at Esso Stations have stepped up to the plate this summer and are delivering refreshing deals to keep you on the go, like two 591 milliliter Cokes for just $2.50, taxes and deposit extra. Summer is the season to get outside and get moving. Fuel your summer fun at On The Run! We're back. This is Kia Vancouver's Soccer Talk on AM650. Now broadcasting from the Barber & Co. Studios. Here's your host, Tyler Green. Tyler Green in with you. Simon Fudge at BC Place. He'll join us again at 11.30 to talk all things Whitecaps. Get into this match a little bit more between the Whitecaps and Chivas USA. A 3-1 loss for the Caps this evening. But first, it's time for the full 90 as we look at uh, who Germany will be facing in the World Cup final tomorrow. This is the full 90 on Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk with all the info you need for the countries playing in Brazil. This Argentina profile is presented by DonnellyGroup.ca. The Argentinians saw off Belgium to advance to the semi-final match against the Netherlands in what was a scoreless affair through 120 minutes of play. After penalties, Argentina advanced, winning 4-2. Having won every match in their World Cup journey in Brazil, the Argentines will now face a tough German side who embarrassed Brazil in their semi-final match. Led by Lionel Messi, Argentina are looking to claim their third World Cup title after winning the tournament in 1978 and 1986. That Argentina profile was presented by the Donnelly Group. Watch the final at any one of the Donnelly Group's public houses. Visit donnellygroup.ca to find a location nearest you. That's donnellygroup.ca. Whitecaps lose to Chivas USA 3-1 the final today. But aside from the game, one thing that I really noticed is that more than any other match, people today are not satisfied at all with anything about that game. Whether it was the loss, whether it was the way the players performed, whether it was entertaining or not. Fans, caps, and nor should they, are satisfied with losing at home. Fan, fans want results in a positive manner. Three points at home. They want to make that BC place once again a dominant fortress. And it just doesn't seem like it is at the moment. We'll hear from Carl Robinson in a second talking about the fact that they lost three points and they'll have to make it up on the road. Well, yeah, you did lose three points at home, but it shouldn't be making it up on the road. It should be getting three points at home and going out and getting three points on the road, not making it up. Fans shouldn't be satisfied with zero points at home, nor should they be satisfied with zero points on the road. And I think fans are starting to get more involved in this team, wanting and expecting better results, and the Whitecaps better start performing and giving fans those type of results. All right, let's get into uh, some of that audio from earlier 
today, post-match, the Whitecaps. And we'll hear from Carl Robinson, who talked about dropping those points at home and trying to make them up on the road. Here's what Carl Robinson had to say post-match. I think we've we dropped three points tonight, and like I said all along, you got to win at home and try and pick up points on the road. So I just said to him, "In there, we need to try and win an extra away game now," uh, which I'm confident we will because we we're, we're not bad on the road. We can catch teams on the break, and you know it, it just puts a little oh, a little bit more pressure. But we got to make up a game now. So disappointed, but you know we got a busy week ahead. Okay, so Carl Robinson, you're confident you can go and out go out and win on the road. So. No, you're not making up points. Those, basically what you're saying is that you should be able to go out and win those points anyway. So you're not making them up. You drop three points and you can't make up those points. You're saying you're good enough to win on the road and you should be able enough to, to win on the road. And for me, that's it's it's his way of trying to get out of that, that answer. Trying to Get away from that uh, saying, yeah, we're going we're gonna to make it up somewhere else. Well, no, you're not going to make it up because you can't. You s just said you're good enough to win and get three points on the road, so now you have to just keep winning on the road and win against Western Conference teams and get yourself back into some better playoff predicaments because right now um, some of those teams behind you have games in hand and are steadily rising fast. The Whitecaps have had trouble in the second half of the year. Don't want to see that happen again. Carl Robinson also talked about the result tonight and uh, what he thought on the match from earlier today. I think you, you saw from the first, I think, 35, 40 seconds that when Carlisle Mitchell put, picked up a, a yellow card with a, with a tackle that I thought you, I knew the way the game was going to go. Um, what I can focus on and I want to focus on is my team's performance today. We lost. It's bitterly disappointing because I don't think we deserve to lose. You know, we were very comfortable in the first half, going one goal ahead. We played the way I wanted us to play, without probably the lack of cutting edge in the final third. You know, we 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 done everything correctly, and then the little final details in the give and goes or in and around the box weren't there uh, in the first half. And then even at the second half, when we went down to ten men, you know, we we adjusted it and. Nigel and Darren both come on and we both had, you know, they both had very good chances. So, you know, disappointing, kicking the teeth for me, uh, for the guys in there because of the work they put in. But I said it's, uh, I'll take the positives out of my own team's performance, which I can comment on. Also uh, today, David Osted speaking to the media post-match and uh, he touches on a lot of different things. They ask him, obviously, about the uh, fact that um, whether or not Dan Kennedy had control and whether that goal should have been counted or not. And I'll read you the FIFA ruling after uh, we hear from David Osted. Um, also talks about his team performance. And, and it, again, and Carl Robinson touched on it, and we'll talk about this with Simon Fudge as well. It, the Whitecaps still have not really, last week maybe, other than that, I've, I'm having trouble even figuring out if the Whitecaps have put together a full 90-minute campaign yet. Whether they've been able to play full 90 minutes of good soccer, taking a lead, and finishing it. The Whitecaps today, uh, pretty good first half. Disappointing second half. Overall, just a disappointing result so far in that second half. All right, uh, David Osted speaking to the media post-match. This is what he had to say when he talked to the media in the locker room. Um, disappointed. Gutted is another word. Um, I said before the game we, we shouldn't take this lightly. I, I don't think we did, but uh, we didn't get the result, so i um, disappointed. Did you, did you, what was your thought on the, on the especially the, the first goal? It just seemed like the free header from, from six yards. Was just a lack of concentration? Or? Um, yeah, we were talking about the, it, it's the little things and uh, just um, switching off for a second is, is, is costly and it was in this situation. And uh, we'll, we'll work on that and, and see if we can pick up a little bit better. Just by going down 10 men, it seemed that you guys, I mean, you guys did have three pretty good chances. You felt like even after, you got, after Jordan went off, you guys still probably 
you know, had the better chances before they, before they took the lead? I thought we had some fantastic chances. I thought the guys did well to create them, and uh, I thought we should have scored. Uh, but not doing that again, uh, we, we, we get a goal against and, and go down 10 men and 2-1, and then it's, it's uphill. As a goalkeeper, you saw the... Have you seen the, the replay of the Morales chance at the end? And, and you know... Um, you probably have the best opinion of whether or not it should have counted. I, I haven't seen it, so it's hard for me to um, to, to speculate on what I'm hearing. Is that he's got a hand to it, and um, so what we'll say is that that's one of those 50-50 situations, and those haven't been going our way, um, especially not here at home. Um, if if it's a save, uh, good for the ref. He, he got that one right, and. Uh, I'll say hopefully you want some of those 50-50 situations will, will, will come our way. Is it frustrating to concede another goal to Eric Torres, especially if he was the guy to look out for before the match? He's becoming quite a bogey for this team. It is, because I, I think we did really well um, containing him. But uh, he spins off at one time and, <laughs> and makes a good header and scores uh, um, the, the goal that, that, that kills a little bit. So I'm disappointed of, of conceding that kind of goal. Does it feel like it was a tale of two halves? I mean, the second half just seemed, the luck didn't seem to go your way. You had the red card with Harvey and then the two goals. Um, how, how did it unfold for you? Did you just feel that maybe things I, were kind of slipping away? I, I feel like we controlled it really well in the, in the first half, and I thought we, uh, like I said, we didn't take them lightly and, and we pressed them. Uh, but again, in the second half, things did not go our way. And still, I think we did, uh, did well going up and uh, trying to press them, trying to create chances. But... This just wasn't be it to be today. Is it a positive that you have a game against TFC on Wednesday and you don't have to dwell on this match tomorrow? Yeah, I think uh, we want to get going as soon as possible. So TFC will be a big match. We have some big match coming up. So it'll be nice to, to get going again. So uh, David Osted touched on it there. But again, also uh, talked about the fact that the Whitecaps just have had some brain cramps in this game and, and, and such. Uh, anyway, uh, one of the topics that David Osted talked about, one of the hot topics going on is the fact about whether or not the Whitecap goalkeeper, or sorry, the Dan Kennedy, had possession of the ball, whether or not Pedro Morales scored that goal. So here's the ruling. The goalkeeper is considered to be in possession of the ball when while the ball is under his hands or between his hand and any surface, i.e. ground his own body, holding the ball in his outstretched open hand or while in the act of bouncing it on the ground or tossing it in the air. When a goalkeeper has gained possession of the ball with his hands, it cannot be challenged by an opponent. So if it is an indirect free kick, from where the offense occurred. So that's why Dan Kennedy basically got a goal kick there. That's why there was the foul. So that's the rule. That's how the referee saw the play. Whether or not you agree that he had possession or not is up for debate, but the referee made the, the call. And, uh, well, it's too late to argue with him now. So there you have it. We'll get more into this match. Simon Fudge was at the game. He was in the locker room. He talked to the players afterwards. He will have his thoughts on what happened from earlier tonight, and we will get all of those as well here from Carlisle Mitchell, who scored his first Major League Soccer goal when we return. You're listening to Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk right here on AM650. Simon Fudge, Carlisle Mitchell, next. It's happening throughout the province with the BC Soccer Bulletin. Make sure you don't miss the next chance to see Canada's women's national team play at BC Place. Tickets are now on sale for the October 28th match versus Japan. For more information and to sign up for priority access to the FIFA Women's World Cup Canada 2015, visit bcsoccer.net. If you are interested in becoming a referee, BC Soccer is hosting referee clinics throughout the province in the month of July. Find out more and sign up for these clinics at refcenter.com bc. That was the BC Soccer Bulletin. To find out more information about these events and on how to become more involved with the beautiful game, visit bcsoccer.net. Follow us on Twitter at SoccerTalk650 and at Tyler Green FC. This is Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk on AM650. Whether playing soccer on this continent or football on every other, 
Umbro is the name worn by top players and teams worldwide. Those same uniforms are available for your team or club at Umbro.com. Umbro, proud to be the official supplier of Canada's men's and women's national teams, is celebrating 90 years of expertise in the game. If you want your club to play like the pros, dress them like the pros at Umbro.com. Umbro, the heart and soul of football. What's it like to score in the beautiful game? Come to Kia Vancouver before July 13th and score the best price during Kia's 2014 FIFA World Cup sales event. Plus 0% financing for 84 months and up to 4,000 in cash bonuses on select models. And only at Kia Vancouver, score free lifetime car washes, free lifetime oil changes, free lifetime airport shuttle and parking, and always service with a smile. Kia Vancouver, the power to surprise at kiavancouver.com and on Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon. The Straight Razor Shave, a leading man classic. Steady hand coaxing the rugged face back to smoothness. This nearly lost art has found revival at Barber & Co. Hot towels, straight edge blade, and your face. It's an experience that reminds you you're alive. You're a man in the company of history's finest men. Start at barberandco.ca. Pick your barber shop in Yale Town, Gastown, the Financial District, or Camby and 18th, and relax into the big leather chair for the shave of your life. Held high above the heads of soccer supporters everywhere. The Soccer Scarf is a world-class tradition, and Global Scarves can get you into the game. From English soccer clubs to Canadian hockey teams, Global Scarves has been producing high-quality UK-knitted soccer scarves for over 40 years. Because you're dealing directly, you get the lowest price, and your order shipped in as little as 15 days. Global Scarves are a high-margin, high-spirited fundraising idea. Contact Brad at GlobalScarves.com or visit GlobalScarves.com. <laughs> The Donnelly Group has soccer fever, so they're throwing open the doors to nine of their famous public houses at 9 a.m. for all 64 matches in Brazil. Come watch the game live. Brunch is served at every venue, and there are 540 Carlsbergs. So wake up with soccer, Samba style, and make sure you're at one of these Donnelly Group establishments. The Blackbird, the Butcher and Bullock, Tavern, the New Oxford, Library Square, Cinema, the Bimini, Lamplighter, or Three Brits. Get details at donnellygroup.ca. Safety. It's vital to each of us. Hear from people who've seen the significance of the safety that comes from a spiritual defense. They've learned that relying on God cares for people in unmistakable, even surprising ways. Compelling ideas and real-life accounts on the next radio edition of the Christian Science Sentinel. Listen for the Christian Science Sentinel radio edition each and every Sunday morning at 8.30 on all-time favorites, AM 650. Vancouver's Soccer Talk on AM650. Now broadcasting from the Barber & Co. studios, here's your host, Tyler Gray. If you're looking at, uh, for some place to watch the World Cup Final tomorrow, why not check out the Pint, Vancouver's largest sports bar, boasting great daily food and drink specials. Not only is it a place to go to watch your caps, but the headquarters for the uh, World Cup action offering 1575 pitchers of Bud and Bud Light. And lo and behold, the Pint Germany House who are in the final. So the perfect spot to go cheer on Germany, but regardless of uh, the country you're cheering for, or if you want to go see a Whitecaps game, you won't miss any of the action with over 75 TVs throughout the pint. To make a booking, email vancouver at thepint.ca. Simon Fudge rejoining us now from BC Place. We'll also hear from Carlisle Mitchell in just a few minutes. For the Vancouver Whitecaps, 3-1 losers to Chivas USA today at BC Place. A little over 19,000 fans in attendance going away unsatisfied with what happened tonight. Simon, your thoughts on the match. How satisfied or unsatisfied were you with the performance from the Vancouver Whitecaps tonight? Very unsatisfied. Um, I was I, I was actually left uh, really shaking my head at the end of that. I mean, the the way the second half unfolded and just how they allowed things to slip away. When I thought for certainly from about the tenth minute on till half time, in that sort of thirty five minute spell, uh, they looked the team that was in control, created a lot of chances, got the lead through a, a, a very rare. Headed goal off a set piece. We haven't seen many of those from Vancouver over the years. Um, and, and delighted for Clyro Mitchell to be able to get that goal. I mean, he's come ever so close to doing so. 
But the way the second half started and the way it just unfolded, it just gave you the sense uh, that it wasn't going to be their night, uh, even though there were spells within it where they created some excellent chances. And for a time, even with 10 men, they looked the better side. Um, I was actually left feeling uh, very dissatisfied and disappointed, almost as disappointed as some of the really poor performances I saw from them, like uh, away in Salt Lake and the defeat in Colorado in many respects. When I look at this, and we heard from Carl Robinson a little bit later on, or a little bit earlier, talking about the fact that they gave up three points here, and now they're going to go and make those up on an away trip, and he thinks that they can go and win on the road. He thinks that they can go and win on the road. So for me, you're not making up those points. Those points are gone and lost forever. But I'm looking at it and listening to his comments thinking, if you're confident that you can go out on the road and win – those aren't points that you're trying to win back. Those are points that you should be getting. What do you think? Yeah, I, 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 I think I, I was quite surprised by, by, by his comments, and I think uh, you're, you're certainly in what you just said earlier this evening in, in your comments in terms of your reaction to his, to, to his points, I think are, are very well merited. Um, this was a game in which, you know, it, you know, the, the, it was just as important, I felt, that they needed to take the three points here as they did last week against Seattle. It's a Western Conference opponent. It's a team that's on the rise. Suddenly now they've allowed that, that very team to take the three points here in Vancouver. Huge win for the Goats. And now they've allowed them to be in the playoff race with them. They're, they're now in the mix with Vancouver to try and make the postseason. Something that, you know, about a month ago we wouldn't have even given any amount of consideration. So you've got to give a lot of credit to the visitors for that as much as, you know, put the thing, point the finger at Vancouver for allowing them to take three points tonight. They've lost those three. They lost the three points this evening. They can't get those back, and they really need to look at themselves and say, you know, that was an opportunity lost, and they're very much at fault for that. Uh, if they can win on the road, well, let's face it. This team is going to make the playoffs and do anything in this league. It has to win on the road irregardless of, they feel that they can make up those points that they've lost this evening on the road. That was, you know, they still need to go get results on the road, no matter what the situation is. So I don't really buy into being sold on those comments other from, from Carl Robinson. And the Whitecaps currently in a playoff spot. They're in uh, fifth place. They have 25 points. The LA Galaxy are one point behind them. They have two games in hand on the Vancouver Whitecaps, uh, the Galaxy do. Chivas is two points behind in seventh spot, but they've played one extra game uh, behind, uh, over uh, the Vancouver Whitecaps. And Vancouver, uh, other than Seattle, they have one or two games uh, to make up from the teams ahead of them. So there are uh, some opportunities there for the Vancouver Whitecaps to even pass some of the teams in front of them. Uh, really, they could pass uh, at least two teams and tie RSL if, if they can pick up a victory here on the road and, and when they make up those games. But uh, but you want to win those games at home. Your, your bread and butter should be home games. Every team, everyone talks about winning at home is the, the most important things. And, and the Vancouver Whitecaps, it just seems like winning at home isn't necessarily something that they're good at of late. No, and, 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 and for me... I, I, I think that if you're going to make yourself a force to be reckoned with, or particularly with your rivals in your own conference, it's how well you play at home. Tonight was a kind of game in which they needed to underline just how difficult of a team they were going to be to everybody in the conference and everyone in the league for that matter by following on from a very big win last week and taking the three points tonight. People, I think majority of people would have favored the Cops to try and get the, you know, get the victory here by how well that they played last week, even though they were facing a team that was in form. And if you look at the way the first half went, it pretty much gave, a, gave some really, – could only think that Vancouver was going to probably see this game home and, 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 take, and take the victory and go into a very busy week in a very good position. Now they've, they've, they've had a, a, what was a really – Poor performance. Let the game slip away. They don't head on the road now in a, in really very good spirits, and I actually really do wonder if they're going to have much success at all 
claiming much of anything from Toronto and from Salt Lake over the course of, of this next week. And you look at the, the Vancouver Whitecaps results and such a dominant force uh, in years past. The Whitecaps start the season with a win at home against New York. Uh, they pick up another victory against Houston at home. Then they lose to Colorado at home. They, tr- they draw the, the Galaxy. They beat San Jose. They uh, Again, they draw um, Seattle. They draw Montreal. They beat Seattle, and now they lose uh, against Chivas. So they just—they've been very inconsistent in years past. It has—they—they they were had such a great home record, and that's uh, one of the unfortunate things that happened. The other thing that we talked about, and it seems like we—we uh, we talk about this quite often, um, just the fact that the Whitecaps still haven't put together that—that that 90 minute performance just yet, and uh, they need to. Perhaps against Seattle last week was the one time uh, this year that they've been able to do that, but we just haven't seen it on a, on a regular basis from the Whitecaps to put together 90 minutes of, of full play. Exactly, and really the, 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 the standings in a lot of ways, even though teams have played more or less games, I don't think lies. The fact that they're sitting pretty much on the playoff line in fifth place in the Western Conference is very much a strong reflection of that inconsistency. You know, I go, you know, before the season started, I think more or less both you and I were very much in a, in a relative agreement that this team was probably going to finish somewhere fourth or fifth in the standings. The way things have been unfolding up into this point, especially now that they've more or less, well, I think they have actually reached the halfway point of the season, is is I think that that's pretty much where they're going to finish up because um, we we get we, we just again we've just it's been more inconsistency within 90 minute matches and over a stretch of games from them we get good things and exciting things but no levels of consistency that makes us think they're going to get up with Seattle and Salt Lake and Colorado in the top 3 i think it's been very costly to them that they lost two of their three games against the rapids i don't see them for at any point during the season being able to overtake them because of that um, and and I think in a lot of ways, it's going to be very difficult for them to finish somewhere in the top three. There needs to be a level of consistency that we have not seen from them yet. They're in a lot of ways their best football of this campaign that would take them into those positions. It would be advantageous, obviously, for the playoff pitcher, but I have a feeling that that's not going to be the case. And I think they're going to be actually spending the rest of the season pretty much looking over their shoulder. Uh, and wondering if they're going to be in or out when it comes to the postseason. Now, on the positive side, you're listening to Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk here on AM 650 Radio in Vancouver. My name's Tyler Green, talking with Simon Fudge, Simon Fudge 74 on Twitter. Uh, positive from the Vancouver Whitecaps, they actually scored on a set piece. Yes, you heard that correctly. They actually scored on a set piece. A corner kick coming in, Carlisle Mitchell heading in his first Major League Soccer goal, a very good positive. And, and one of those players, uh, Carl Mitchell, we've seen it uh, in training, we've seen it in some of the Canadian Championship games, some of the um, you know under-23 games that he's performed in, some of the reserve games that he's performed in over the last number of years. He has that ability, and it was nice to see him finally get that goal and something that the Vancouver Whitecaps have been missing, so definitely a positive there. It has been, and um, I'm, I'm particularly pleased for him because I, I, I can, I, I'm trying to actually think maybe back to very late in the very first season in 2011 when uh, Carlisle Mitchell got a cut, sort of a run of games here late in the year that he might have even had one or two chances in those very games as well, and he came close to scoring with a header. Uh, it's been a nearly not kind of quite situation for him uh, finding the back of the net, so to see him score in the manner that he did this evening was was really pleasing i i he does bring an element to the game uh where he he has great vertical and and can win the ball in the air especially from a defensive point of view we saw that last week uh to to very good effect in in you know claiming the victory against uh, seattle defensively um but here tonight but tonight uh, although he didn't really have to get it get up in the air vertically just to head at home it was good to see him score in, in uh, although it might have been a bit fortuitously through the legs of Dan Kennedy to um, to find the back of the net, claim his first goal in MLS, and then there needs to be more from him. B 
be nice to see the likes of an Andy O'Brien and Jada Merritt do more of the same if they get back fit and get in the same positions because those kinds of goals are very important. They're going to be games of this season where they may be a difference of only one goal or only one goal in it, and it may come from such a from such a situation. And and more of that type of goal production is has been sorely lacking and is it needs to be seen from this club if it is going to progress. Uh, Simon, uh, we'll now hear from uh, Carlisle Mitchell talks about scoring that goal, his first day ever in Major League Soccer. It's a great feeling getting my first goal for the club, you know, but unfortunately we didn't get the results we were expected. But you know, as a team, we got to just just water under the bridge and we just go go to run and get a win. Did you see much? Did something? You seem like you guys were a bit sluggish to start the second half. What, what did you sort of see? Oh, you guys were a bit sluggish to start the second half when they when they tied it. Did, lower did it lower. I didn't think we were sluggish to start the second half, but. You know, I just think one of the guys lose concentration on his marker and, you know, the guy got a free header and he scored. Carla, you've been close on a couple of headers on, on corners before. Uh, were you getting a bit anxious? Did, did you think it was ever going to come? Yeah, I was, I was getting close. You know, I say, I say, well, you know, I've been getting close and I, I said one day it will be in, you know, and it was a great cross by Pedro and they deserve a well finish. Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, got a little bit lucky too. I think it went between Kennedy's legs, didn't it? <laughs> well, you know, yes, they say sometimes you got to make it one lap, and that's what I did. Were you disappointed defensively with the goals that you conceded, especially the first one? Uh, well, the first one, opposite PC, I was disappointed. But as I said, the soccer, we just we just had to build as a team again and concentrate more. Any injury concern? You came off close to the end of the match? Mm, not that bad, you know, I rolled my ankle at the end of the game. But it's okay, you know, let's got to see the doctor tomorrow and start the therapy on my ankle, and by Wednesday I should be fine. <laughs> Simon, uh, also in the match today, it's uh, Simon Fudge joining us on the line here, regular contributor, goal.com. You can read his stuff there at goal.com. Um, my name's Tyler Green, key of Vancouver Soccer Talk on AM650 Radio. Simon, some controversy, uh, whether or not Dan Kennedy actually had possession of the ball, whether it should have been whistled down as a as an infraction from Pedro Morales. Uh, what was uh, the thoughts of, of most of the players in the locker room? We already heard from from David Osted, who kind of skirted the subject uh, a little bit. But uh, you know, what did uh, what did people have to say about that one? Well, I think they were they were a little bit surprised. I think they 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 thought it was the ball was loose and that Morales went in. I mean, it was a play that happened very quickly. I know that the, the players, you know, remonstrated with the referee and the, and the, and the officials after the match uh, because of the blown call. Most of the fans obviously in the stadium erupted to quite uh, boisterously in, in stoppage time when they saw the, 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 res, the highlight on the big screen. Um, I, uh, one or two, I don't know, were necessarily able to see it or whatnot, but I think they were they, their reaction was uh, of disappointment that it wasn't given as a goal because they thought the ball was loose. Myself, personally, much to the consistency of the rule that you, you read out there, um, and it was interesting that the Whitecaps residency uh, assistant coach Steve Mealy, I think, also saw it as well. Um, the ball was... Dan Kenny had his hand on top of the ball, basically to hold it down firm, and that is deemed under the laws of the game that you have possession. And I think both the assistant referee and the referee themselves saw that. And it was at that very point that when he had the ball handed on his hand like that, you can, I guess you can not only, not only can you have the ball on top, your hand on top of the ball to have possession, but also under it as well, according to Steve Meadley. And, um, and that is possession of the ball. And you can't be dispossessed as a goalkeeper as uh, such under the laws of the game. Um, and it was in that situation, it's really from the highlight that, you know, Morales came in and swiped. I think it was fair from Morales to try and do so. I mean, he could de- say that it was, you know, he could deem it was loose. But uh, in many ways, probably the right call was made based on looking at it again. Um, the fact that the, his hand was on top of the ball. For the players, they felt a bit aggrieved. But it, in the end, I don't think it was really enough to sort of tell the real story of the game. It was the way this team collapsed from being in a very advantageous position at halftime. Simon, uh, we're going to take a quick time out here, but when we return, we've got hot fudge coming up from you. That's right. Ooh, looking forward to it. And uh, it's been hot outside. So what is hot fudge going to be uh, be like 
in about uh, five minutes. If you're looking for a place to, to watch the World Cup final tomorrow, the Pint, where the Donnelly Pub locations, including the Blackbird, the Butcher and Bullock, Tavern at the New Oxford, Library Square, Cinema, the Bimini, Lamplighter, or Three Brits, some of the places you should watch. The Pint, 1575 pitchers of Bud and Bud Light, and the Donnelly Pubs, all serving up cold Carlsbergs of 5 40. All right. Quick timeout. As mentioned, we will announce the winner of our uh, Barber Pool. Gets a one hour service at uh, barberandco.ca. Whether that's a haircut or a hot shave, we'll find out who's the lucky winner of that. And of course, what everyone's been waiting for Hot Fudge is next. Follow us on Twitter at Soccer Talk 650 and at Tyler Green FC. This is Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk on AM 650. The 2014 season of EA Sports BC Soccer Premier League. Welcome to the front lines of the game. Welcome to the big league. The one that provides an elevated level of competition for high performance players within BC and contributes to player development for the Canadian national team and professional opportunities here and abroad. This is where you're going to see the top youth players in action. Catch some of the most intense soccer in the province. EA Sports BC Soccer Premier League. For information and upcoming games check out bcsoccer.net whether playing soccer on this continent or football on every other umbro is the name worn by top players and teams worldwide those same uniforms are available for your team or club at umbro.com umbro proud to be the official supplier of canada's men's and women's national teams is celebrating 90 years of expertise in the game if you want your club to play like the pros dress them like the pros at umbro.com umbro the heart and soul of football. What's it like to score in the beautiful game? Come to Kia Vancouver before July 13th and score the best price during Kia's 2014 FIFA World Cup sales event. Plus 0% financing for 84 months and up to 4,000 in cash bonuses on select models. And only at Kia Vancouver, score free lifetime car washes, free lifetime oil changes, free lifetime airport shuttle and parking, and always service with a smile. Kia Vancouver, the power to surprise at KiaVancouver.com and on Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon. The Vancouver Street Soccer League isn't out to change the world. Just give the men and women in our homeless communities a chance to play soccer. Regardless of skill, everyone's included in practices and matches with teams from UBC, the Vancouver Police Department, the Vancouver Mayor's Office, and more. The focus is fun, but it builds skill and confidence, and that can change someone's world. Find out more at VancouverStreetSoccer.com. This message fueled by Dusso's Fresh Pasta and Sauce. Proud to support community on and off the pitch. At the Home Depot's Boxing Week in July appliance event, get an additional 10% off already reduced prices on major appliances, like a Samsung French door fridge, now just $11.97, and an LG washer and dryer, now only $16.95. Let's not wait for Boxing Week to save. Let's start saving right now. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. While quantities last, see store or homedepot.ca for details. Back, back. This is Kia Vancouver's Soccer Talk on AM650. Now broadcasting from the Barber & Co. Studios, here's your host, Tyler Green. Right now, score the best price during Kia's 2014 FIFA World Cup sales event. Plus, get 0% financing for 84 months and up to 4000 in cash bonuses on select models. All at Vancouver. Kia, KiaVancouver.com, 396 Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon. Oh, baby. Hot Fudge with Simon Fudge. Yeah, well, the Mr. It's that time of year where it's very, very hot, and I would uh, highly recommend that if you can find it, track down the Mr. Frosty ice cream truck. It was running around today with uh, my soccer team's uh, Seven Aside Tournament and doing brisk business. And certainly if it's something that you can find out there, and you can track it down and make it stop and uh, sell on things. Get your hands on a product from the Mr. Frosty ice cream truck. Sounds good, Simon. I, I was actually uh, thinking that today. I think I saw the ice cream truck the other day and was thinking, ooh. Oh, it was. I went to the, the, the outdoor movie on, uh, on Tuesday. 
where I got uh, riddled with mosquito bites. <laughs> Off is a good uh, uh, thing to purchase uh, for the uh, outdoor movies. But the ice cream truck came by, and I was thinking I should get the ice cream truck. So thank you for reminding me. I might do that tomorrow. Simon, yeah. uh, you're also a writer in uh, Goal.com. What? Uh, what have you? Obviously, a recap of t- today's match. We can read. Uh, obviously, you've uh, tweeted out the links at uh, Simon Fudge 74 on Twitter. What else uh, are you working on this week? Well, I'll be keeping a close eye on uh, how the team does as it goes off to Toronto FC and Salt Lake. Um, be uh, keeping an eye out on that. I also uh, sort of gave uh, last week a little bit of a take on uh, my thoughts with Marco Bustos and uh, his decision to play for Chile. I know we talked about that last week and sort of tried to take a bit of a take and like sort of the feedback from Canadian soccer fans on the fact that time and again we can always sort of put the blame on the players, but it is it maybe not time to maybe look at the, the setup and, and the, of our own national team program, and why it doesn't have the level of respectability that makes it totally irrefutable that Marco Bustos will only want to play for one country uh, when, say, the overtures of another country have come towards him. Is it not time to maybe think about those things as well? All right, perfect, Simon. Well, thanks, and uh, hey, you're back in studio next week. Absolutely, and I'm looking forward to it. And I, I know the moose has served me well in my <laughs> absence, but... Um, I'm 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 looking very much forward to being being back with everybody there and uh, and uh, and and doing another episode next week for sure. Sounds good. We'll see you next week, Simon, and uh, right. we'll listen to you and we'll check out your stuff. Simon Fudge joining us uh, as he does each and every week on Twitter at Simon Fudge seventy four, and like you said, he can read uh, his stuff in goal.com as well. It is time for the final cut, brought to you by Barber and Co on Twitter at Barber and Co, Barber and Co dot ca is the website for full-service full barbershops for your big haircut, hot shave, uh, buzz cut, fade, beard trim. I was in uh, earlier this week. Did not wear my Germany shirt. I went on Tuesday before the, the Germany game. Did not wear my Germany shirt because Martin is a France fan. And he has the scissors. And I thought that that could be very dangerous if I disrespected him and wore my Germany shirt into Barber & Co. I did not. And I got a great uh, great haircut. You can get the uh, ultimate barbershop experience. There's four, service, uh, four locations to service you. Gastown, Yaletown, the Financial District, and the new one at Cambian 18th, barberandco.ca. And we've got a gift certificate to give away for either a hot shave, a haircut, to one lucky fan, one lucky listener who... Uh, weighed in on the barber pool today and uh, the winner is Boris and uh, Christina will get in touch with you on how you pick up that prize the final cut today he said Germany 3-1 Germany will press Argentina and uh, Argentina will find it hard to gain control and break through to beat the Germans so he's going with Germany and the, the German bandwagon by the way completely full Completely full. After they just dominated Brazil, everyone now picking uh, Germany to win the World Cup. Can't, uh, can't count out the Argentinians, though. Lionel Messi, hey, one kick, and he can score. He's done it so many times in this tournament. What will happen tomorrow? We'll find out at noon tomorrow when the World Cup final kicks off. We will talk about it next week. We also have two Whitecaps games to talk about one in toronto one in real salt lake thank you for joining us for the crew here at kia vancouver soccer talk executive producer christina contributor simon fudge mo the moose producer greg the hammer Balak. special thanks to thomas rage and friend anko for their continued support my name's tyler green thank you for listening you can download the podcast am650radio.com we return next saturday at 10 p.m right here on am650 Hey Jude, the Beatles are next. This is Kia Vancouver's Soccer Talk on AM650. Follow us on Twitter at Soccer Talk 650 and at Tyler Green FC. What's it like to